Hi, I'm George, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this Happy Mother's Day card. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, make sure to click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, hit that bell notification icon for notifications of my new videos. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's get to it. This Photoshop Elements Mother's Day card project is fairly straightforward, but there are a couple of tricky things we'll be doing with those layer styles. Let's just hide this one, just get rid of that. There we go. Choose OK. We'll be working with this image right here as our background image, and also with this image here to put inside of the letter, so those two pictures. Now you can get the links to download this on my website, and there's a link for that, of course, in the description. And we'll start off with this as the base image. And then we'll take this image. I have these as floating windows. If you don't have that set up, it's easy to do. Just go up here to Edit, come down to Preferences, and General right there. And just make sure these two check boxes are checked. The important one is Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. Choose OK. Then if your window is docked, you can just grab the tab and float the document like that. That's not important for the background image. That can be docked. It just makes it easy for the foreground image here, the flowers, just to grab that background layer and drag it onto that image, just like that. There are different ways, of course, of bringing your image in. This is just one technique. So we have, we'll just hide that for right now. Come down to the background. Now the first thing I want to do is to lighten this up and soften it down a little bit. And we'll do that with a hue saturation adjustment layer. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and hue saturation right there where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that that is checked, choose OK, and there is the adjustment right here. I'll leave the hue alone, that changes the color, I don't want to change that. I just want to change the saturation and the lightness. If I go to the right, it becomes a bit more saturated, and the number I used was 19. And if I go to the right on lightness, it just lightens everything up, and the number I used right down here was 57. And then just close that window, there we go. Okay, that's our background. The reason I lightened that up is just that the letters stand out a lot better. If the background is too saturated, the letters tend to just blur into the background. So this just makes them stand out. Speaking of letters, let's go ahead and do that now. I have the foreground color set at black. Doesn't really matter. Mine's black right now. Grab the type tool. And in here, the one I used, the typeface I used was called Cooper. Right here, it's a Cooper Black Regular. Actually, I've used the Cooper Standard Black right down here. It's just a, kind of a happy looking face. The important thing about this is that it's real thick, real thick letters. And that just allows space to be able to show that photo of flowers inside of the letters. So you can use any typeface you want. Just make sure it has real thick lettering to make it easy to see what goes inside of those letters. Now the size I have down here is at 321 points. Black. No tracking, letting is auto, everything else is the same, and then centered. And then just click up here someplace, doesn't matter exactly where. And type in happy, enter key, and Mother's Day, enter key. There we go, happy Mother's Day. And hit that green check mark. You can then just basically center that on the page. Looks like that's pretty good right there. We now can put the flower image inside of these letters. This is an easy trick. We already have our flowers up here. Just click on that layer, right click where it says layer one and choose create clipping mask. And that just puts this image inside of whatever is on this layer. In that case, what's inside there are those letters. So it puts the flowers inside of the lettering. Now we need to get just a little bit fancier here. The first thing I want to do is I want to brighten the letters up. They're a bit on the dull side, as you can see. So we'll do that with an adjustment layer right above this one. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and we'll do Hue Saturation on this one as well, where it says Use Previous Layer. Just check that checkbox, choose OK. And there's that adjustment layer right above that Flowers layer. And here, again, leave the hue alone. We'll make this more saturated, and the number I used was 43. And we'll also lighten this up a little bit, and the number I used for that was 14. There we go. It just kind of brightens things up a little bit, and you can then go ahead and close that. 
Now I want to put a stroke around the letters. Let's come down to our letter layer, which is this one right here, and go up to layer, come down to layer style and style settings. And in here, where it says stroke, check on stroke. On the size, we'll be making the size a bit thicker than this. So let's go ahead and bring this up to five. And this is just kind of a nice thin line around that. I don't want black, so click on the black box right here. It brings up the color picker, but also, if you notice, it also is an eyedropper in here. So just come in and grab one of these magentas. Right from the E right there is a good spot. Click on that. Gets a nice magenta. Choose OK. And now the color of that outline matches the image very, very well because we're actually using a color right out of that photograph. And then choose OK. OK, now at this point, I want to put a second outline around this. Now we can't do that with another layer style in here. It's just going to change this for something else. So we need to merge all the letters onto a new layer. And to do that, let's hide this background right there. So I hid the hue saturation and the background, both of those layers. Go up here to the top layer that says hue saturation 2 at the moment. And then using a special keyboard shortcut that's holding down the shift, the control, and the alt keys and then just tap on the E key. And what that does is it takes these three layers, merges those together onto this new layer here. We can now hide these. We're done with that. Now since this is all merged onto one layer, I now can put another outline around this. We also can show the background if you want to right now. There we go. Okay, so back up here to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, and we'll be doing another stroke right here. Click on that box brings up your color picker, click in here someplace and just drag to the upper left hand corner. That gives you a pure white. And we can then make this larger. And notice now that the layer, the outline here is outside of that other outline that we just did. So we're using a double outline on this. Now the number that I used for this one is a width of 16 pixels right there. And then choose OK. Now I also want to do a drop shadow below this. But if I do a drop shadow right now, it's going to be a drop shadow on the letters and not a drop shadow on that outside, which is what we need. So there's one more trick in here. Go up here to this layer, right click where it says layer 2, and choose simplify layer. Notice how I just lost that FX over here. What happened was is it merged this outline into the whole image and now it's just one image. We now can apply a drop shadow and the drop shadow will apply to the outside which is what we want. Okay, so back up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings right here. Change your lighting angle. Over here someplace is pretty good. I like using 135 kind of as a standard one. Click on drop shadow. We'll leave the size alone, so just kind of a nice soft edge. The distance is right there. You can see that there's the distance. This is just a little bit of a soft edge in there. That's the size up here. The larger the number, the softer the edge, the smaller the number, the harder the edge. And seven is good for this one. The distance, I don't want it out that far. So I'll just change the distance down to 24, just a little ways away, enough so you can really see it. And I want it a bit darker than that. So I'll bring our opacity up. You can see there's the opacity control right there. And the value that I used was 65. And choose OK. OK, so far so good. We now need to put our appliques in here, little flowers that are around this thing. And for those, we're using graphics out of Photoshop Elements. Click on the graphics button right there. And there's a whole bunch of them right in here. See, they're down maybe about a third of the way down. If you pull this little slider right down here, about a third of the way down. And we have these three, four, four button images, little button flowers. So I'll start off with Clicking on this one, it should come into the middle like that. Just pull it over, put it in the bottom right hand corner someplace, kind of like that. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you know, around here somewhere is good. Click on the next one, that should bring that one in. Same thing, bring that down, just kind of overlap that a little bit. Now if you see a little light blue triangle like that on those images, that means that it has to be downloaded from the Adobe website before you can use it. You know, there's no cost to that, it's included in your program, they just don't install it until you need it but you will need to have a currently active internet access to do that. So if you see your little blue triangle right there, make sure you have internet access and you can then just click on that and download that. Okay, so we have those two. Let's just do one more. I'll take this one over here. It's Flower Daisy 8. And I'll take that and I'll just put it on top. Notice how the later ones are on top of the earlier ones. They just kind of automatically stack inside of the layers. And a little trio of those looks pretty good. 
Let's do one more of these. Click on that. There it is. I'll put that one in the upper left hand corner just a little bit off the edge like that just kind of cutting into the edge a little bit and there we go there's our pretty fast pretty quick happy mother's day card it's kind of a nice cheerful card now one little warning about this one i use a lot of really bright colors inside here and bright colors don't tend to print out that well the background will look good these may come out looking a little bit dull if you're doing this as a printout I'm designing this for use as a web-based card, you know, send somebody an email with this picture in it. But if you want to use this as a printout, you may have to play around with your colors a little bit in here to make these a bit richer. Just increase your saturation a little bit and that may help out your printing. It really will depend upon the printer you're using, the paper you're using, things like that. There's no real good way to be exact about how this will look on your printer until you actually tried it out. One thing though, if you use a good photo quality glossy paper, you get the best colors possible from your printer. But there we go. There's our happy Mother's Day card here for 2020. If you had fun with this video, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you click on share, and make sure you subscribe as well. And again, to really learn how to use Photoshop elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.